here at the Walmart in Chico. Again, one of the, or the uh, unofficial evacuation site for uh, hundreds of families that were displaced by the campfire. Take a look. We've been here for a couple of days already, covering the what's left of these fam what's left for these families. People camping out in their tents, in their sleeping bags. Some of them sleeping in their cars, and this has been the case for them for more than 10 days already. And the concern again this morning is the cold weather, the bad air quality, and uh, again, rain, which is actually planned to move in by Wednesday. Now, we've been here the last couple of days and we've seen this vacant lot turn into pretty much a tent city. Hundreds of families setting up. But uh, yesterday, a lot of families just decided to pack their stuff and go to uh, one of the six nearby shelters. Uh, to this uh, Walmart in Chico. That's because Butte County officials and American Red Cross officials are telling these families, they're encouraging them, in fact, to go indoors and stay away from the cold. We're meeting of families, and this is really devastating, heartbreaking. We hear these families cry constantly. We're meeting this family here. Uh, this is, unfortunately, very, very common to see. Um, Again, it's just sad. They don't know what to do. Some of these families don't know when they'll go be able to go back and see if their home is left, what's left of their home. They're now finding out some of their family, family members may be injured. Some of them disappeared still on the missing list. And again, the concern is the cold weather and the rain that's moving into this area. Uh, I'm not sure if Cami is, Cami is, is she, are you okay to do yeah, it? Yeah, we're okay. This is Cami Machado here. Uh, she is, Hello. how are you? Feeling okay? I'm feeling good. I just need to, you know, it's, it's gonna go with my husband and I are gonna sleep in a tent in the rain. But my daughter's gonna be safe and we're gonna be across the country for the holidays, but at least she will be well taken care of so we can get our butts in gear so we can take care of her ourselves. Is this a common sense for you? Is this happening for you all the time? When you just first time crying? Uh, it's my first time actually crying in public. <laughs> And in front of people, not even my husband, I've cried. Like, I've always gone, you know? How, how long have you been here? I've been here for about two or three days. I think this is the third day now. Third day? And you've been yeah. sleeping in your tent and in your car? Uh, in your van? People have offered us um, their vans and, and their cars so the baby's warm. Um, but we've been sleeping in the tent for the most part and just making a little blanket mountain over the baby. <laughs> how difficult is it for you as a mom to be living through this? Um, it's not difficult when you look at the positives, but it's extremely difficult when you look at it as that's your baby, and you, you're trying to do everything you can to take care of your baby. Some of the some of these folks decided to pack their home their bags and go. Yeah. Why, why, did, why did you choose to stay here? Because my car is stuck up there in the fire. <laughs> yeah. That's the only reason. Because I can't. <laughs> Nineteen months. Yeah. What's, what's that like? This, you know, having having a child out here. I'm sure it's hard. It's the most difficult thing because you know you're doing the best because that's all you can. That's all I ha can do right now. I can't do anything else. I have no control, and I'm trying to make the best out of the situation. And uh, just knowing that this is this isn't you know a man-made or self-created situation. So that takes the guilt away, what and you... it puts into the whole as. Uh, flight or fight response. It's, it's supposed to rain on Wednesday. What are you planning to do? Uh, there's a nice bridge with my name on it to go underneath where I won't get flooded out with my husband. Uh, what happens to your baby? She's going with my parents to Arizona um, to my sister's house where they're going to sleep on the couch. Uh, so she's at least safe, taken care of. And there are secure. some shelters. I know, I know Gridley, they offered there's a shelter there, Orland as well. Why not go to a shelter there? There's no way to get out of them. I don't have a way to get out to go to an Amtrak station to get to Seattle where I have jobs waiting for me and a place waiting for me. So ideal situation for you, your daughter goes to Arizona, then then what happens to you? If you could, I, what if would I you could, do? I would get on an Amtrak an Amtrak train tonight or tomorrow morning early and be in Seattle by Thanksgiving and then start work on Monday. Not having to spend a holiday away from your kid. How devastating is that to be away from your family? It's better than spending a holiday with your kid not able to give her anything. But it really sucks. I hated holidays as a kid, and now that I have a kid, it's like, 
I don't even care about them for myself. I just want to see her face and make her smile. The shelter situation, what was that like? You, you were in a shelter? Yes. How long were you there? I was there for about five, five or six days. Five or six days? Yeah. Okay. And, and for those five or six days, what was it like there? Were they feeding you? you the first two days, they were actually being really, really accommodating and amazing. And then by about Sunday, Monday, Monday is when they started to get a little bit more cold and uh, calculating and they stopped putting out drinks, they just waters and they had like set times to like put out even coffee and they had set TV times and what locked people in for you know the night. Was this? Uh, Pleasant Valley Pleasant Baptist. Valley Baptist. Yeah. yeah uh, they actually told us seven different things about when we had to go. We were told Tuesday, and then we were told um, Monday morning, Sunday night, and I finally told them, I said, I want it in writing. Okay, I have a daughter. Give it to me in writing. Make up your guys' mind. So give me a three-hour notice. I need, like, a whole night because I have my whole daughter to, like, make sure she's okay while I'm making sure that we get to point A and B. When are you planning to go back home? Uh, to Megalia? Yeah. If they let us go before the before the end of the week, if I'm still here, I do plan on going. Um, if not, then my husband and I actually are planning to come back about the first week or second weekend of December. Um, and that way we can grab all of our stuff out to did survive, salvage, and make the claims that we need to. So just so I get it right here, um, sorry, just right. so I get it right here. Thank you. Good luck. So again, you just saw her, uh, Katie, uh, simply just bursting out into tears. So it's the first time she's actually cried since the fire uh, began more than 10 days ago here in Northern California. The most devastating, the most deadly uh, fire in California history. Before we go, I just want to show you uh, this tent city here. Definitely not as big as it was a couple of days ago when we first got here. A lot of folks decided to pack their, to pack their stuff and go to the nearest uh, shelters. There are six American Red Cross shelters. Five of them, five of them are still accepting people. They still have plenty of room. And again, they're encouraging people to leave because it's so cold out here. The air quality is so bad. It's going to rain on Wednesday. Uh, we've heard some reports of, uh, you know, Walmart telling these folks that they had to go. We've spoken to uh, Walmart representatives. They tell me that these uh, families can stay here as long as they want, as long as they need to. Uh, and they're definitely walking around and asking if they're okay and providing uh, whatever materials they need. You can head to abc10.com to get a full list of those evacuation centers that are still uh, accepting or allowing people to uh, stay there and spend the night.